Hello, it's Tom with Digital Foundry, with a look at how Homefront the Revolution plays on more budget-orientated PCs. The game has huge ambitions for its visuals on all formats, and PC is without a doubt the way to play it. Frame rates on PS4 and Xbox One aren't its strongest suit, where the game spends plenty of time at the lower end of 20 FPS, and sometimes below that. Now we've had the chance to test the game on a Core i3-4130 CPU paired with an overclocked GTX 750 Ti graphics card. This overclock is our usual one, a 200MHz boost to the core clock and 400 on memory, and this setup actually turns in a performance level very similar to console. In terms of graphics settings, we very carefully deduced the quality presets used on PS4, and replicated it for this budget PC. This 750Ti is running at a 1080p resolution, with medium quality SMAA and textures set to very high quality. Moving to the advanced menu, every setting here is set to high quality, and curiously neither PS4 or Xbox One use any motion blur whatsoever, and so that's the way we're going here, simply disabled on PC. So back to the tests, and what do we see? Well, this is an enormously taxing game on some pretty high settings, and yet, our GTX 750 Ti seems to more or less match PS4 note for note, while falling just behind Xbox One. There are points where it blazes ahead by up to 5 frames per second in fact, but at others it might lag behind by 1 or 2. It's an eerily close match, but at the same time it's still falling far short of the lock 30fps we're after. Of course, Xbox One runs at a native 900p, and it's really the PS4 grade visuals we're after, with its 1080p output. In matching the visuals as close as possible on PC, it's surprising that PS4 boasts such high quality presets in the first place, given its patchy performance, and you'd think dialing some effects down to medium might have helped its 20 to 30 FPS range. But what's interesting about testing on a lower powered PC like this is it indicates where the game's bottlenecks really are, and partly explains the situation on console. So essentially, the CryEngine tech at this game's heart has always relied deeply on CPU power, and it's here rather than on the GPU that we're recording a bottleneck. In a bid for a perfectly locked 30fps on this PC, even dropping all settings to low and the resolution to 900p doesn't give us a perfect level of performance. Even with these lowest of low settings, outdoor battles still cause our i3 processor to hit 100% load on its logical cores, meaning we still get sub 30fps dips. It goes some way to explain the situation on PS4 and Xbox One then, where frame rates are typically in the 20 to 30 FPS range. And so, in theory, even if both consoles ran at the lowest of low visual settings, this budget PC testing shows the low core clocks on their Jaguar CPUs might still cause a bottleneck around lots of enemy AI. This isn't a GPU side issue, in other words, and it explains why we're seeing most presets set to high like this on PS4. Dropping most settings just wouldn't address the real point of pressure on these consoles, and indeed our budget PC here. Be that as it may, you can still squeeze far better frame rates from this i3 and 750Ti setup. Just dropping the resolution to 900p will pull back a good 4 to 5 frames per second of performance in most scenes and at medium settings across the board, it'll basically waver around the 30fps line. At this point, you'll always be ahead of console frame rates, and the drop in visual quality isn't too stark either. It's not ideal, but this is clearly not a game built to cater for lower end PCs, and by extension, it shows how the limits of PS4 and Xbox One CPUs aren't a good fit for many games seen using CryEngine so far. You reached the transceiver yet? Anyway, that's enough from me. Like and subscribe if you found this interesting, and until next time, thanks for watching. Ready before you take one on, okay? Good luck, Brady. Scarce. That's a vent, Brady. A bomb at that point should create an open.